Wine without tariffs. Vineyards around the country are rejoicing this morning after China abolished its heavy trade barriers on producers. They've been in force since, as we mentioned, 2020. Jared Stringer heads up the Lane Vineyard. He joins us now from the beautiful Adelaide Hills. Jared, very good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. I'll ask about the broader industry for, uh, later, but what does it mean for your uh, vineyard, your company? Yeah, certainly for the Lane you know, we're like many producers are not immune to uh, to what happened in in China. Um, the domestic market uh, was quickly oversupplied uh, with a lot of wine that was destined for China, uh, which meant that uh, a lot of smaller to medium businesses like us uh, were squeezed, uh, and so uh, that meant uh, we had a downturn in sales, uh, not only domestically but also across a number of our other export markets, where a lot of people who were sending wine to China had to pivot and start sending wine to, to other markets. So we export to places like Canada and Scandinavia, as well as the UK, uh, and a lot of that wine that was destined for China ended up going to other countries as well. So the reverberations were felt across multiple sectors. Uh, so uh, for us, this means we're hoping to, to see a, a slightly freer market in those areas where we can start exporting more of our wine, um, but also a better trade domestically as well. Um, and certainly for the Adelaide Hills, where we're based here in South Australia, we're quite a premium wine growing region, particularly with whites. We grow some of the best Chardonnay in the country. Uh, so we've seen significant rises in the cost of fruit here in the Adelaide Hills. There's a lot of companies who were red focused and, and were making a lot of red wine destined for the Chinese market mm. uh, also shifted their focus towards white wines uh, in order to make up some of the shortfalls they were experiencing. So we've seen astronomical rises in the price of grapes and, and therefore the cost of, of us doing business here as well. So um, there's no doubt that this will ease some of that pressure. So to the broader industry, uh, you mentioned red wine. There has been something of a glut uh, as a result of those exports, uh, punitive tariffs being placed by China. On China, I know, for instance, your vineyard produces some Pinot Noir for, for starters. Uh, how, how long do you see before that glut starts to ease? Oh, look, it, it's, it's certainly not going to ease in the short term. Um, there is a significant oversupply of, of red wine. Um, it, it's uh, in the vicinity of, you know, potentially years um, before we start seeing a levelling out of, of that market. Um, certainly, you know, we produce um, some quite premium Shiraz here at the Lane Vineyard uh, and, you know, we've got uh, up to two years of that in stock as well. Wow. So um, it's going to be some time before we start to see uh, that levelling out. Um, fortunately, um, you know, for, for the lighter premium styles like Pinot Noir you mentioned mm. and Gamay and the like uh, here in the Adelaide Hills, we've got a very strong domestic market for uh, those products, a high quality products. So um, we're still quite strong in those areas, but, but certainly I'd say as far as um, more of the uh, premium red wines with respect to Shiraz and Cabernets go. There is a significant amount of that uh, still uh, in tanks and will be for some time. OK. Uh, now, listen, uh, we'll let that plane pass, which is good. So relations are still pretty fraught between China and Australia. Listen, it's unmistakably fabulous news. These wine tariffs have been lifted. Uh, are you, as, as a wine company CEO, worried, though, about, yes, this is good news now, but things may turn for the worse down the track for geopolitical strategic reasons? Look, it, 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 this has taught us a lot of lessons, I think, um, not just for our industry, but I think for a lot of industries in Australia who, who rely on, on export markets. Uh, so, you know, I think that the number one lesson, um, which is a good lesson in life, is not to put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, so, you know, this has taught us to diversify. Um, so in order to, to seek more export markets, um, you know, us as, as, as a company, we've been um, exporting more to, to places like Vietnam, Japan, uh, and certainly more to Canada as well, um, trying to diversify, uh, you know, our risk. Um, and, and we'll continue to do so because I think that's important. You know, it was a, it was a great market, um, you know, at, at its peak, you know, $1.2 billion worth of wine going to China. Um, and then, you know, as we saw, that, that dropped below $10 million uh, last year. So, um, you know, you can't rely on, on any 
single one market, uh, you need to absolutely make sure you diversify and will continue to do so. It's not certainly something that I think we're going to see leap back up to that kind of value very quickly. I think we're going to need to tread carefully. Um, there is certainly no silver bullet for this. It's yeah. it's welcome news, absolutely, and 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 uh, you know we we are ecstatic that uh, you know this is an improvement for our industry. We've had a lot of doom and gloom lately, so um, you know we're wrapped with this news. But it's it's certainly tread carefully is the is the way we're going.